Hey guys, this is a solutions video for Code Forces round 108. I solved problems A through D and I'll be going over the solutions. So starting with problem A, we have R red beans and B blue beans and we have to divide them into several packets. And we're told that in each packet we must have at least one red bean and at least one blue bean. Further, we're given a constraint D saying that the absolute difference between the two quantities has to be smaller than or equal to D. So let's take a look at the samples. So we have one red bean and one blue bean. Their absolute difference as the our divisions. So the absolute difference between the blue beans and red beans in any packet has to be smaller than or equal to zero. And we can just put them both in one packet here as explained in the sample. Now next we have two red beans and seven blue beans and their absolute difference must be smaller than or equal to three. Let's see how we can optimi optimally divide them. So two reds and seven blues with a difference of three. For now let's assume that we have more blue beans than red beans. The same solution works if we have more red beans than blue beans, we just need to swap those two values. What we can do now is we know that we can only form two packets because our minimum beans are two. So these are my two packets. And I know that I have to put at least one red and at least one blue bean in each of them. So I'm going to subtract two from each of them, which means that we'll be left with zero red beans to uh, zero red beans and we'll have five blue beans left. Now, how do we optimally distribute these blue beans? What we want to do is to, we want to keep on giving each of these packets a blue bean until we can't do that anymore. So this is what an optimal division looks like. And you can see that the difference in the first packet between the number of blue and red beans is greater than three. So we don't have an answer for this test case. And we can do this for, um, for all test cases. So I'm not going to go through more samples. You can check these out yourselves, but let's go over the code for this. So now if we have less red beans than blue beans, then we can swap the two values. I'm just subtracting the amount of blue beans we had, assuming that we have less blue beans. And then this is basically, if we can perfectly, we basically want to find the maximum extra beans we get in a single packet. So we can simply do that by dividing the number of red beans by the number of blue beans and checking that and checking if it's not perfectly divisible. And this is pretty simple. Moving on to problem B. We have an N into M grid. So we have a grid. We are located at cell one comma one. And we have to reach n comma m. Now, if we move, so if we want to move up by one cell, then it incurs a cost of n x x burls, where x is our x coordinate. So if you want to move up from this cell, then we have to pay one burl. Now, if you want to move right then it incurs the cost of y burls, which is basically y is a y coordinate. So again, here the cost will be one. Now here our x coordinate is one and y coordinate is two. So if we want to move right, then we incur a cost of y, which is two. So the cost to move to two comma two adds up and becomes three because we took one to go up and two to go to the right. Now in our input, we are given an ending cell 
which is basically n comma n and we're given a sum k we want to check if we can reach that cell with with a sequence of moves such that the total cost incurred is k now this is going to be, this is pretty simple dynamic programming i'm not going to go into the details but um it's called knapsack i think i'll leave a link down to this in the description a tutorial on it but if you're interested here's some recursive iterative and bit set optimized course code so i thought my recursive code would tle so i coded up it i coded it up iteratively and using a bit set so this is pretty simple we just said oh and one thing to note is that we can't use an array of integers because we'll get mle i actually got a penalty that way and this code is pretty simple so i'm not going to go over it let's move on to the next problem Berland regional so in problem C, we basically have N universities with, yeah, we have N universities or actually we have N, N students rolled at universities and each student has a programming skill. s of i now for each k from 1 to 10 from 1 to n we want to find the maximum sum of scales of teams we can form now for a single given k the the sum of scales for a university is basically Let's say k is equal to 2 and we have the following skills. So what we want to do is we want to form pairs of 2 of the highest values. So that basically be pairing these two up. Then we can pair these two. And we can pair these two. And we were able to form teams successfully. But if the count was odd or the number of programmers in this university weren't divisible by k. Let's say we had another element here. Then we, we have to discard this value and we can't use it. So you, you can kind of see that the optimal way to do this is to sort the array per university. And then you try to... So you first just sum all of these values up and take them. And next, what you can do is you can um, right. So you want to you want to calculate prefix sums after sorting the values in a university in non-decreasing order. Now you'll have a remainder if your if the number of programmers isn't perfectly divisible by the size of the team, and we basically want to subtract those the smallest not. The, um, let's say the remainder is r then we want to subtract the smallest r values from the universities so we can efficiently do that using prefix sums and so we first add for so we maintain a global array storing our answer for each value of k and for each value of k we first add the sum of values of this university. Now, if we if we don't have a remainder, then we can add all of them. But if we do have a remainder, we have to subtract the first remainder values from the answer for that k. And since I'm doing zero based indexing, I subtract remainder minus one. So the total time complexity for this would be n log n because I'm sorting. And yeah, this won't be n squared because the sum of all programmers is n, even if I'm looping from 1 to n and then going through the programmers in each university. Moving on to problem D. This is a simple dynamic programming problem. We basically have two arrays A and B. Let me copy the sample.
and we are told that we can reverse any one sub segment in the array a for example we could reverse this and then it would become one two three what and we have to maximize this quantity and the quantity is basically the product of a of i into b of i for all i from one to n so currently without reversing anything the um the answer would be 2 into 1 plus 3 into 3 plus 2 into 2 plus 1 into 4 plus 3 into 2. That's without reversing anything. But we could get a better answer by reversing something. So for example, in the sample test case, you could reverse these last two elements. And then the final answer for the array would be 29. And we can solve this with a simple DP. Let's define our states. So I'm going to say that DP of IJ is the max sum of values if element I goes to position j this basically means that we reverse a sub segment starting at i for example if i is 4 and i decide to send this element somewhere for example let's send it over here then i know that the element before this will go to the element after the position where i sent this Basically, I'm saying that a transition will be this will be easier to explain with code. So our transition is basically we look at the previous element and we try to send it to this j plus 1. So for example, if i is equal to 4 j is equal to 1 this means that we sent this element here which means that we send the element at index 3 to position j equals to 2 which is basically doing this now we have this additional cost or profit which is basically the product of 1 and 1 and 2 into 4 because we swapped their places and after that, we can just add the uh, the profit we earned by sending 2 over to 3 and so on. So right now, when we do this process, we don't want to account for the sum of the rest of the array. We'll just simply make two prefix, make one prefix sum and one suffix sum array. Although you could just use one, I just made two for simplicity. And in the end, if I'm, if I'm sending element i to position j, then I know that elements from position i plus 1 to position n were unchanged and elements from position j plus j minus 1 to position 1 were unchanged. So I can just add the prefix sum from there and the suffix sum from i plus 1 and I can take the maximum answer. As our base case, we have dp of i i is equal to a of i into b a of i because if we send the element to where it is we don't really send it anywhere and the cost is just a product of those two numbers so this is simple n squared dp and so here's the code i just create my prefix sum and suffix sum array this is the base case i do the dp here and then i just take the maximum value of all of those Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and give it a like. Also share the video around and I'll see you in the next one.